Here's the number to call with information on prime suspect cases. 1-800-892-PRIME. That's 1-800-892-7746. Your calls are completely confidential. Mitch Knopf of Haslett, New Jersey had a dream to make it big in the music business. He and his band were on their way until one night in 1992. That's the night Knopf and a few friends were driving home from a local club. It was a drive that suddenly turned from routine into a two-lane terror. Legs were everything to me. Everything. But your dream was what? To be a musician. To make it. It was so close. Mitch Knopf lost the use of his legs on January 18, 1992. He was 23 years old. Up until then, he'd lived what many would consider a typical young man's life. He worked a little, hung out with his buddies, had a passion for music, had dreams. But his life changed the minute, the second, he saw this face. Why? Why, why would you want to shoot it? <laughs> Look at me. I'm like this. How I... I just love to find out who it is. Just a gunman. You can see New York City from the New Jersey Bayshore area across Raritan Bay. But life for the people that live in the townships and small cities over here, places like Hazlitt, revolves around the community pool, wide front lawns and quiet neighborhoods, not crime in the streets. At least it did, until 6 a.m. one Saturday morning in January. Nightclubs down here, they were traveling this way, and when they pulled up to this light here, the suspect's vehicle was pulled up in the fast lane. Detectives John Mullins and Mike Campbell are investigating the shooting of Mitch Knopf and two of his friends. It happened in this Hazlitt intersection when Knopf stopped for the light. Another car with four men inside pulled up next to him. This was the face Mitch Knopf saw sitting in the other car's passenger seat. I look over, I look back, I look over again. The guy's like, you know, what do you got, an attitude? You know, I, I just sit there and he gets out of the car and starts hitting me. My window was rolled down. You're how far behind them at all? Oh, 50, 75 feet. Steve you're, Wilson you're drove up behind the two stopped cars. By this time, all the occupants were in the street fighting. He tried to stop it. I walk up to them. I was about from here to there. I was going to start to break it up. I grab one kid and start pushing him away. Another one comes around from the car with a pipe in his hand. Pipe, a stick, something wrong. And said, I, th I, uh -uh, I don't want to get involved with it. So I start backing away. But Knopf and friend Matt Nolan didn't back away. They finally gained the upper hand on their attackers, Nolan taking a lead pipe away from one of them. This one. And then... I remember slapping him in his face once, and then his buddy said to me, Yo, he says, why don't you guys just get in your car and get out of here? He says, because you don't know this guy. He said he's sick, he was in the military, he's got a gun, and he'll shoot you. I walked back in the car, light turned green, we took off. Next thing you know, boom, 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 boom. You can hear the bullets flying past you. But he's on, he's on this side, so he's shooting out this way and then... Right, this out the window, what, whichever window he's in, that's the information we have from the victim. Inside the car, panic. Glasses everywhere. Nolan had been hit once, another friend twice. Mitch Knopf has been struck in the spine and loses control of the car. The victim in the back takes the steering wheel and crashes up against the barrier, and the car travels off up to uh, the roadway there and up on the grass medium over there. There's a girl crying hysterically, waving us down, so we decide to pull over. Usually I wouldn't, but it looked serious, so we did It was Don Ross driving by on his way north to ski that managed to get the three wounded men to the hospital. Nolan and the other friend recovered. Knock hasn't walked since. They sit there in a bed, try and convince them, you know, it's still worth to live. But, you know, you deserve that. These three men are wanted for attempted murder. The driver of the car is described as about 30, 6'3", 170 pounds, with blonde hair, a thin build, and fair complexion. The man who started the fight is 23, 6 feet tall, 180 pounds. He has black, wavy hair with brown eyes. And this is the best composite of all, the shooter. 5'8", 160 pounds, 29 years old, with dark hair, glasses, and a goatee. Police emphasize his military background hoping someone who served with him will call in. It's a face Mitch Knopf will never forget. If somebody looks at that composite, that's him. Yeah, definitely. 
a dream shattered in an instant. As in this case, often one of the most important tools